Friends, good evening. Welcome to this wonderful time of celebration as we welcome the birth of our Savior. This is Christmas Eve, and your presence with us is a great privilege. So join us as we journey together through this holy night. Tonight is a holy night, a night of stars and angels, a night of shepherds and sheep, a family in a stable. Tonight we celebrate in memory and in hope the birth of our Savior, the holy child of Bethlehem. Let all God's children tonight come to the manger. Join me as we share in this morning's, this evening's opening prayer in unison. God of grace and God of glory, shine upon us as we reflect upon the shining light of your love. Reveal your presence here as we sing songs of the angelic chorus and hear words of prophets of old. Through your songs and stories, remind us of your incarnate love, born as a tiny child named Jesus. In the light of your glory and grace, we pray. Amen. Please join me in this evening's Christmas prayer. Let's pray together. Merciful God, all is now ready. The candles are lit. The circle is complete. Our hearts and our lives are open to you. But as we prepare ourselves to hear again the joyous story of Christ's birth in Bethlehem and to sing carols of praise, may we also remember those whom Christ taught us to especially care for. The homeless, the hungry, the poor, the oppressed, those who are sick, 
those who mourn, those who are abused, and those who are outcasts, those who are aged, and those who are still children. We pray for peacemakers and for a peace that can heal our broken world. Finally, Lord, we ask that you might humble us so that we might not be afraid to enter the stables of our world and to find this child being born again for us. Amen. The Hopes of the Prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Mary and the angel. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and, she, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give, him, give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy. He will be called Son of God, and now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Oh, so, so. 
The Birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descendant from the house and the family of David. He went to register with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the end. Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. So wait, little holy child, didn't know who you were, didn't know you came to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. The shepherds and the angels. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. again through the scripture the story of Jesus's birth and the events that led up to it. This story certainly reminds us in the most powerful of ways that things in life are often beyond our control, that God will call us to times and places that we would never go on our own. When I think of Mary and Joseph and their story, I cannot help but wonder how did they get around to preparing for the birth of their special baby? Did Mary buy purple baby clothes 
because everyone knows that kings wear purple? Did the baby Jesus get Noah's Ark paper in his nursery? I suspect that however shocked they may have been by the angel's news of the special child they would be welcoming, that whatever the first century, century equivalent to be, getting ready for a baby, Mary and Joseph were in the midst of those preparations. Yes, we certainly didn't plan to have God's baby, and we're really not sure what it will mean, but we've got the nursery ready, and we're buying baby clothes and all. And then while they were busy making their plans, life happened. In this case, the emperor decided to call a census. And rather than send people door to door or communicate with people through mail and the internet, as is the case today, everyone was required to return to their hometown to be counted. Again and again in the story of Jesus' birth, the gospel writers make it clear that agreeing to follow God's plan and being a faithful person doesn't exempt you from the issues of life. The census may be called, cancer may show up, wars may be declared, the economy may be in the tank, and as we've all been living it, COVID-19 may be all about us and around us. But you know what? In the midst of it all, God still arrives. Outside of our plans and control, God still shows up in the particularities of our lives. I'm sure that on the road to Bethlehem, Joseph and Mary had some time to wonder how all of this was going to come together. How were, those, they, were how were they supposed to be faithful and still obey the emperor? Well, that's a really good question. But they trudged on and they made it to Bethlehem only to discover there was no room for them at the end. And you can imagine as Mary's labor pangs began, her fear at wondering would there even be a safe place for her to give birth. She must have felt panic, pain, and maybe even anger that things were not going the way they were supposed to go. Well, what was no doubt discouraging news to them is probably good news for us. Because if God chose to be born among parents, seeking shelter in someone stable, while they were doing what was required of them by the emperor, then we should expect God to break into our lives while we are also in, in the midst of unprepared and even unwanted moments. I'm sure Joseph and Mary wanted the Son of God to be born at home, surrounded by family and supported by their community. I'm sure they wanted him not to be wrapped in cloths or lying in a feeding trough surrounded by farm animals, his, his first visitors being lowly shepherds. I'm sure they wanted God to know that they were taking good care of his son and doing their best to give him a good start in life. But reading the story, I wonder if God doesn't want to remind us that you know what, it isn't really up to us. We can't control every little or big detail of our lives. <clears throat> that God's son will be born to us this day a savior, whether we're ready or not. Whether we've got it all figured out or not. Sometimes we only, you know, look for God in the beautiful moments the well choreographed and planned moments, but God has other plans. We tend to think of ourselves seeking God, but it turns out it is God who seeks us and who's willing to step into the moments of our lives that we don't write about in our Christmas cards. <clears throat> the good news is this. God chose to be with us, to live among us, to come crashing into the world just when we are the least prepared. As John 1.14 says in the message translation of the Bible, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory. Christmas reminds us in the most powerful of ways that indeed Jesus is moving into our neighborhood, and we are invited today to see him with one of, our, one of our own kind glory, with one of a kind glory with our own eyes. And I pray that whatever you are in the midst of, whether it be joy, challenges, or heartbreak, that you will have hearts open to sense God's presence, that you will have ears open to hear the good news in the midst of it all. 
that God will surprise you even with his presence. Because today is a day and tonight is a night when for Christians, the world begins anew. We can't be together as a church family and sing together our favorite carols. We may not even be able to see the people we wanna see or do the things we would like to do. But on this holy night of nights, there is indeed good news. We need no longer be afraid, the scriptures tell us, for unto us is born this day a savior who is indeed Christ the Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank you so much for your generous offerings to us uh, in all the many ways you give to support our church. And now I ask that you join me as we dedicate the offering. 
and say the prayer of dedication. God of light, author of salvation, you've given us a gift beyond price, the gift of your own child, the gift of everlasting life. We join the angels and the shepherds this night to celebrate our great joy as we offer you our gifts, gifts of deepest love and thanksgiving. In Christ's name we pray, amen. John, the first chapter, verses one through nine, 14, 16, and 17. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might be believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received, grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Our circle of Advent candles is lit. Now tonight, we light the central candle, the Christ candle, reminding us that Christ is the light of the world, the center of our lives, the shining beacon of hope for all the universe. Christ is born, praise God. We give thanks for this holy night of nights.
Friends, on this holy night of nights, as you go forward, go forward to be the light of Christ, go forward to offer the love of God, go forward to share the hope of Christmas. Go in God's peace. Amen. Stop.